Welcome to Reflections of the Word. I'm Renee Jacob, and I'm here with Apostle Larry Fisher, and we're here to give you some insight and reflections of the Word of God that was shared with us on today. Apostle Fisher, we're excited about this series. So am I. Yes. God's will versus your will. Now, what prompted this work? Well, I'll be honest with you, just common sense approach to life, common sense approach to um, how we um, deal with situations and circumstances and at the end of the day thinking about, you know, how would this have worked out or this situation, that situation worked out uh, if I was following God's will as opposed to my will. And I think it's a situation um, that we all face yes. uh, all the time and we just don't, uh, we just don't acknowledge it as much as we ought to. And that is so true. So let's tell our audience and update them where we are in this series. Well, we started out talking about our will versus God's will, um, the basic things that we do and the way we live day to day. Um, sometimes uh, even thinking that um, we are okay with God when we're not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and being satisfied with our will, you know, when things can be going totally haywire and not wanting to make any changes. And so I've had my own experiences, nothing about this series uh, and not anything I preach um, says that I, I, I'm just because I'm preaching it doesn't mean I got it all right. In Amen. fact, I'm preaching it because I got a, so many things wrong. Yes. And um, so, to, you know, dealing with God's will versus my will and just coming to that reality, how things could be different. And then we talked about strategies and systems that God has in place. Uh, we talked about um, strategies um, and systems that the enemy uses, mm -hmm. strategies and systems that we inherited as a result of the fall of man when Adam sinned, and um, and then today we talked about um, uh, us being in God's will, being a reflection of His perfection, and God's perfection is His will. Yes, and He's in, He's imposed that. Um, perfection on us yes uh, he started out with Adam he said let us make man in our image and our likeness God's will uh, um, um, created Adam yes. and it was a will of perfection Adam was perfect at one point until he died and uh, so we're up to that point and and next week we're gonna talk about internal systems mm. that are developed as a result of external mm -hmm. uh, systems that we are exposed to so it's, it's a lot to talk about. It is. And I remember when the first segment of part of the series where you shared, you asked this question, is your will your enemy? And I thought that was so profound. Mm -hmm. And I love messages that make that ask you questions. Sure. So that hit me hard. And I definitely had to share it on Facebook. And people were like, it made you pause okay. to really think about your will being stopping you from being in the will of God. And then today, you said something about your grace. God gives grace to those that put forth the effort. That's right. So, so many people would say they're waiting on God or things are not happening. Mm -hmm. It's because you ain't trying to do nothing. That's right. That's so, I love these questions that you have given us today. And we have some awesome scriptures uh, that you shared with us today. And we want to share the scriptures with our audience. I know Psalms 84. But your main scripture, I believe, was Romans 12. Romans 12. A very familiar scripture, um, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Yes. And um, talks about um, being not conformed um, to, the, to, to the world's ways, you know, the, the world's behavior, the world's systems, mm -hmm. and our uh, customs. And um, what we don't know uh, sometimes is that what we're being uh, uh, warned against is allowing for systems that are already present to remain. Mm, so that's, that's why it says, I beseech you, my brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And so it basically states the fact that we're already controlled by systems uh, that we were exposed to from childhood mm -hmm. on up into adulthood and things that we haven't taken notice of that we live by that continually holds us back yes. from having and being all that God wants us to have and to be. Yes. And so um, it's, it's, it's like, a, uh, for me, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an eye opener, um, you know, because it's just another level of discernment. But understanding that in order for us to really know the will of God, we have to change some things about 
who we are That's and true. how we think. Yes. And you uh, quoted today, uh, so is a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. So it's our thoughts. Yes. And, and as you said, that's the battleground, mm -hmm. is the play, these thoughts that we have. Mm -hmm. So being able to change our thoughts and get in alignment mm -hmm. through the Word of God, which you use, how we, it transforms us. That's right. And that's what we need, the Word to transform us yes. so that we can come into the image of Christ. Right. And presenting your body. That's right. You know, and you said something about uh, we can present our bodies, uh, but you, you are dead. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're dead sacrifice trying to be a living sacrifice. Well, because you know, when we present our bodies a living sacrifice, it has the implication that we are born again. Yes. We're living as a living sacrifice. In fact, it really pertains to those who are born again, because that word is not for the sinner, those that have never given their life to Christ. This is for those who have given their life to Christ. And now we're being exhorted to live a different way. Yes. And um, and and be a living sacrifice. So you were once dead. Now you're alive. Now you have the capacity uh, and the ability and the help from God to live a sacrificial life. Yes. And we should want to sacrifice. And it, in fact, it imitates the life of Christ. Yes. Because Christ's life, His body was a living sacrifice. And we're being conformed to the image of Christ. There are going to be some sacrifices that we're going to have to make that 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 uh, pertain to our bodies, where we go, yes. what we look at, what we touch, yes. you know. But more so, how we think, yes. um, because you know, there's an old proverb. I don't know if it's a proverb, but there's an old saying: "Change the way a man thinks, and you'll change the way he lives." God's will supersedes everything in everybody. Ephesians 1 and 11 says, in him, I got to give you this, in him were we also chosen, having been predestinated according here to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purposes of his will. This speaks of God's perfect will. He works all things out according to what? according to his will. God is, listen to me, God is not persuaded by you and I and our prayers to do something that is contrary to his will. I don't care how good you pray. I don't care what, how much pleading you do with God. God is not going to do anything or operate in any way that is not consistent with his will. Because the day he does, he sees being God. You all missed that. The, the day that God compromises his will, he can clean out his desk and go home. He's done. Yes. Yeah. And that is so important. So in the body of Christ in this time of the season of God's will versus our will and the systems that are taking place, the way we think definitely has to come in agreement with the word of God mm -hmm. so that we can really be vessels mm -hmm. that can bring change mm -hmm. and be able to create uh, environments in our homes of change by speaking the word, praying yes. the word. Yes. And you talked about the educational system mm -hmm. uh, and several other systems, but that's one of the ones I know that's on your heart heavy. Yeah. So we're, we're in a battle for that yeah. and understanding what we need to do as believers not to get caught up in these systems. That's right. Well, you know, the, as far as the school system is concerned, we're at a place now like never before where the enemy is, is, is launching all out assault yes. on our youth and our children and their future. Yes. And, and it has to do, again, with their minds. And, you know, education is about dealing with the mind. And so when you impart, you're imparting uh, uh, um, concepts and, and precepts into the minds of people. Mm -hmm. So when you give them the wrong information, then they're going to live wrong lives. Yes. And so we have to combat that and we have to be uh, um, dedicated and, and about uh, to, to making sure and committed to making sure that what our children receive uh, yes. is, 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 is of a godly nature and it's something that's going to prosper them. Yes, and I believe this this Dylan teaching on God's will versus our will 
is really bringing us in the body of Christ to a greater knowledge of our responsibility to be uh, presenting our bodies for real mm -hmm. and making the sacrifices that are necessary right. for us to be transformed so that we can begin to see the things That's the right. way he sees them. That's right. Because what we've done is without that right way of thinking is attached ourselves to becoming more like the world mm -hmm. rather than like the That's world. That's right. And transformation is not an easy thing. Oh, say it's that. By no means, and when we preach it and we say it and, and we say it in sternness and and sometimes people will think that we are saying it the way we're saying it because we got it already, but that's not the case. Um, transformation is a difficult thing. Um, when we've been living most of our lives uh, on the other side, now, you know, I, I say I use this term, things that God tells us to do, most of the things don't happen over a weekend. You know, it takes time. That's why the Bible says be transformed. And transform speaks to continuation. Yes. It means starting something and allowing the process to work itself out uh, and, and, and so that you can reach that level of change that God wants to do in us through what he's given us and what he's given us is the word. Yes, the word. So it, it's a process. Yeah. Every day is a new yeah. day to get deeper into a place with him and get that greater understanding mm -hmm. and so that that process of being conformed can continue as we apply a word like you said today you got to study the word that's right you can't be bored of not seeking it because if you're not edifying yourself and building your spirit man up through the word of god how you gonna change that's right that's right and you know um it's it's something about that transformation process though that really believers ought to get excited about because you would think that when you see some progress that it should excite you yes. and say, you know what, I came, that thing held me back for so long, but because I applied the word of God yes. and I didn't put my trust in people and, and man and certainly in my own self, but I placed my trust in God and he proved himself and what he did. Now, the thing about transformation uh, again and, and all of that is that we have to position, what scripture is telling us to do is to position ourselves. I used to term a lot of times posture ourselves so that we can be discerning of what God's will is yes. and there's things that we have to do in order to be able to discern and God gives us a road map yes, he on does. how to get to that place where we can hear and know it's his voice yes. then we can prove what is the good and perfect will in other words we might know yes. we might discern and when God shows us and we know then we're obligated now to do it we got, yes. we're obligated to implement it and that's how God changes us through his word amen and I want to reflect uh, to another part of your message today where you talked about Peter. You used Peter as an example. Peter? Yeah, when he was preaching and he couldn't help himself. They told him, if you preach, oh, yes. yeah, you're going to jail. Yeah, 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 and no yeah. sooner than they done released him and he outside the <laughs> gate of the prison, he preaching again. That's right. And and back, locked up again. Mm -hmm. But that was, he was transformed. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Peter had an experience. Um, with God and, um, and, 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 and he, there was no turning back. No. You know, he had some issues at one point with, with groups of people. And, but uh, when God gave him the revelation and he positioned himself, yes. God gave him a discernment and God showed him how he was to treat people. Yes. Because, you know, he, he didn't think that the Gentiles had access, should, should have access to yes. what uh, the Jews had access to. But when he realized through discernment and a visitation from God, it changed him but even before Peter was I mean when Peter preached he was committed to preaching regardless yes. to what it cost him his body became a living sacrifice mm, willing to be God. locked up behind bars yes but yet not willing to bend yeah and that's what God wants us to say Hallelujah. Peter and then when they were released remember when they were released they said who should we obey mm. God or man mm -hmm. in other words what system should I should I, should, should, should I be in, subscribe to, mm -hmm. God's system or man's system, you see, whose will should I be in, my will or God's yeah. will, you know, and those are decisions we make every single, we, in fact, we have to make them every single day, Yes, we do. otherwise, um, wow, I, I can't imagine what would happen if we're not making any decisions, nothing, nothing, <laughs> that's right, nothing from nothing, <laughs> And, and that revelation that Peter got, how it empowered him. Oh, so. yeah. And that's why we need revelation of the word. We need to be taught 
so that it can liberate us yes. and build us up and edify us and then set us on fire. Yes. So that we're not, this is the word that coming to me, so I'm going to say it, not be spiritual cowards, mm -hmm. you know, but be bold yes. with wisdom That's and revelation. Right. With yeah. truth coming out of our mouths to stand for what is right mm -hmm. and stand for what the word of God tells us to stand yes, for. Yes, yes, yes. And it's something how truth emboldens you. It makes you emboldened. Yes. When you get some truth, you know, nothing, uh, sometimes, nothing can hold you back because you know you're walking on something solid and you're believing on something solid. But I'm talking about the truth of God's word. Yes. And, and nothing, you know, he's, he, he can do all things but fail. Yeah. So if it's God's truth, then we, we, we should run with it no matter what. Amen, because you give power to what you believe. Oh, that's right. And while you were talking, I thought about John the Baptist. He, he, he went out preaching. Uh, there's one coming mightier than him. That's right, that's right. And humbling himself and preparing the way. That's right. That's, that thing was in him. That's right. And it, 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 it drives you. When you have that truth and you have the revelation. So that tells on us sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. what you know is what, like I said, is you get power to what you believe, power to what you know, and that's what moves you and activates you and drives you. Mm -hmm. And that some people might call it passion, but it's deeper than passion. Mm -hmm. It's liberty of the truth of God and the truth is what sets us free. That's right. And you know, being emboldened and being being dedicated and committed to the will of God. You know, John was, was seen, looked at as being a little crazy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, eating, eating honey and, 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 and wearing, you know, what he was wearing. He just looked yeah. kind of crazy out there to people, but, but they didn't understand they didn't what he understand. understood, what he yes. knew. They didn't have the discernment that he had, yes. and um, but it provoked him to go forth, even if it made him look. And sometimes with us, remaining in the will of God, we'll have people looking at us strange sometimes, yes, you know, because they, they, don't, they haven't discerned what we... What, what we've discerned and uh, and we what we discern uh it costs us a price yeah you know when we are sacrificing it means it costs you something and so we we, we gain that 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 discernment through uh, us willing to be able to sacrifice something Amen. and another person you spoke of today was joe oh yeah yeah joe was an upright man yes he was yeah but he wasn't he he wasn't perfect but he was, he, was a, he was mature. That's the word he used. He was mature. And yeah. the word is what matures us. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he was mature enough to know that for his children, mm -hmm. he, 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 offered up, he offered up sacrifices to God for his children who weren't right. And, uh, but I like the fact that, you know, God knew Job so well, you know, that, you know, he would just, he would put Job out there, you know. And I used the term, and I preached it some years ago, when God calls your name. When, when, when God says your name, in other words, he, he said Joe's name because he knew at the end what would happen. He knows the same thing with us. He knows, you know, sometimes he calls your name. I mean, he'll allow you to go through something because he knows you're not going to back down. You know, you're going to remain uh, no matter what. And that's what Joe did when everybody said, you know, you need to just, you know, let this thing go and just, you know, and he said, mm -mm, no, I'm not going to. Well, God's will versus your will. This series has really open my eyes Amen. and it's really been more liberating and i'm paying more attention to even decisions that i make okay you know i'm hesitating sure and praying and wanting to make sure mm -hmm. it's well i know i'm not perfect right but i'm being perfect yes, right. as i stay in the word of god that's right. so that we thank god for the series that that's helping to enrich our relationship mm -hmm. and edify us uh in this walk yes. so that we can be the light in the earth Yes. Uh, that will draw others that's and it's right. just it's being a living sacrifice we're living this thing mm -hmm. and that's what's going to bless the people yes. others so that they can see somebody really living it to the glory of God right. and then it caused them to want to know yeah. well what makes you respond the way you do right. what uh, makes you hold your peace or what what is it that that's got you to, with the peace and the content is the word of God mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. believe it that's right that's right and I think the, 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 the final point to this all today is that and the message today was called um, uh, Reflection of God's Perfection. Yeah. And one of the things people really uh, need to understand is that whenever we succumb or subscribe to the will of God, because God's will is perfect, yes. we are reflecting God's perfection. His word, his, his perfection can be measured. You know, his will can be measured. 
And so when we make the decision, I'm going to operate and I'm going to do this thing according to God's will, it is a reflection of his perfection. And he is, he's a, he, he, he loves when we, you know, uh, uh, demonstrate yeah. his perfection and his will in the earth because that's how others benefit. We benefit, but when God's will is reflected, others who, who experience it are changed and they, they benefit from it as well. And that's what God is calling us to. A reflection of his perfection. Of his perfection. That's what God is requiring from us. And, and so that's the way we have to live this thing. And the question is, are you reflecting the perfection of Christ? And is your will the, your enemy? Amen. So, Apostle, give us some final words for the people to really chew on and go to the scriptures to be enriched. Well, I, I would just say, stay in your Bible, be led by the Holy Spirit uh, on what you should read. Uh, ask God for discernment. Ask God for, is there anything concerning your life um, that you, you, you feel is unacceptable? You know, and you know, my pastor used to always say, God, shine your spotlight from heaven on my heart. Show me me show me yes. what's wrong if we have to go back to that you know so that we can correct the things that are wrong because we don't want to be out of his will yes. and one of the things I will say is that when the right system is in place and when we're in God's will if we fall out of God's will if we're out of operating according to God's system his way of living we will we will realize and, and, and receive some chastisement mm -hmm. some uh, 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 what's the word I used earlier today some um, a conviction yeah that's an indicator that we are seeking um uh, and we're operating according to god's system so i would say that those are the things that just reflect on ourselves don't look at other people reflect on who where we are god is is what is this acceptable to you yeah. and what i'm offering is it acceptable to you uh in every manner of who i am and uh and 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 be willing to to hear god say no it's not and you need to fix some stuff amen won't he tell you <laughs> He'll tell you about you. Yes, he will. He's working on us. Yes. Amen. Because we want to be a reflection of That's his perfection. Right. Yes. Well, we thank you for joining us. This is a reflection of the word with Glory Greater Love Assembly Church. And we want to let you know that we're here every Sunday at uh, 11 a.m. So we just appreciate this series. So we want you to continue to understand and reflect God's will versus your will. Get in the will of God. God bless you.